Very good morning. I hope I get a center seat here. Hey, don't worry, don't worry. This is Anish's trick. I mean, he doesn't want to, uh, me to sit with all of you, so he just, hey, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. He knows, he knows I don't like to sit. Uh, but, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I was only aware of popcorns, but you have sunicorns, unicorns, decacorns, whatever is the next sitting here. We need to clap for them because this is a great opportunity for us. Because uh, some of you are sitting on this side of the table, may I get a chance to sit on this side of the table. And it's not far away, just about 8, 10 feet. That's all the effort it takes to make a unicorn or a sunicorn. Yeah? Isn't it? Wonderful. Before we go on, I want to understand what the audience is like. How many of you are brand owners here? Raise your hands. Okay, wonderful. How many of you are mall operators? None. Mall, mall, shopping mall operators, none. You've really achieved, Amitabh. Uh, Anish, wonderful, huh? the hardly any mall operators, all brand owners. How many of you are D2C players? Excellent. So now you know the audience, the kind of audience who's sitting here. The reason you must have come is because you have some expectations out of this panel. So instead of first going to the panel, if I ask you what are your expectations, so we take the customer in the center of a business and take the business across to the table. Anybody wants to say what's your expectation out of this panel? What is the number one thing that is going on in your mind and you want to learn out of this panel? We'll try to solve that problem for you. Anybody? Oh, yes, please go ahead. Oh, that's my friend. Hi, Shundar, go ahead. So I would like to understand that how I can use technology to personalize in D2C space. How I can use, use technology to personalize in D2C space? I wish you could have asked, hey, guy, how can I become a unicorn so fast, so soon? Yeah, wonderful. Anybody else has a question? Yes, please. Bring the mic here. Hello, good morning. What is the best way to have customer retention? Means how do customers come repeat back to us? Wonderful. Yes, please. Come here. This is wonderful, huh? Mostly after the session, we try to ask questions and nobody raises the hand. Before the session, we have questions being asked. So get prepared. Okay, uh, so these guys solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. I'm here to understand how can I solve for them. Any, any sorts of deliveries or any sorts That's of... That's wonderful. Things. He wants so to know what, what your, your problems. Yeah? yeah. Very, very simple. The unicorn wants only $100 million. Okay. You know, the guy wants $500 million. And people like me who moderate want $1 million. It's all very, very simple. You can just solve it for us. But very, very good. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful panel and we have questions. I want to do a quiz. What is the full form of D2C? Look at it. Nobody is raising the hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, what is it? Oh, no, I, somebody told me it was different. It was doctors to consumer. Okay, anybody else? See, I've confused them. Design to consumer. Anybody else? No? Okay, I think that's how we will start. Anybody wants to really explain this whole thing about D2C? Any one of you can pick up this because this is something which people are seeing as only one part of business. And I think that's not true. I mean, D2C is much larger than just the name suggests. Anybody wants to pick up? You all are experts in D2C. Just pick it up. Yeah. D2C is that new buzzword on which a lot of funding is happening. <laughs> but uh, I think D2C is direct to consumer. Uh, direct to consumer can be distribution as well. When you sell through your own website, it's pure, pure direct to consumer. But when you try to do the discovery part of building the brand, it can also be direct to consumer by way of Instagrams, YouTube, Snapchats, and Twitters of the world. That's how we think D2C is. So my, my question to any of the other panelists is, uh, would and Anita Dongre 10 years back, 20 years back, uh, would Ritu Kumar 20 years back, or would a Mufti 30 years back, or would a Pepe 30 years back be a direct to customer brand? They also do direct to customers. Okay, is there any difference? Because the moment we look at consumers as one and say direct to consumers, whether it is digitally or physically, is it the same or is it very different? Neha. Um, so, and as I understand, started from modern trade and then realized that you can't hand over the entire power to the channel partner and took matters in their own hand and uh, went TPO. So, that thing, that's where they went D2C. But how I see D2C is, um, 
In fact, when we Clovia started, there was no term as D2C. What we, how we pitched Vikram at that time was that we are a data-based, um, super speedy brand. We, it's a brand that listens to customers in real time and takes decisions that are typically uh, other so-called traditional brands would possibly take three to six months to deliberate on. Um, and so I think actually ask uh, Vikram because as my audience, my customers have this slang called OG, original gangster. So he's the original gangster who spotted a D2C in making before D2C even became a norm. Uh, but so to ask your, answer your specific question, I think now they are turning around and becoming more D2C because it's not just the channel but also the way you are um, building a product or service. I love this. Neha, you did two things. In one word, she said, all the channel partners need to be removed. I, all my life, I have been shopper stop as a channel partner. Anyhow, that's okay with it. She also mentioned all the brick and mortar guys, you take six months to take decision. We do it in six hours. I think that's the first learning. The speed is what is very, very, very critical here. Yes, she was referring to you, Vikram. And she said probably your D2C definition is slightly different. What would it be? Especially when you're looking at investing. You know, uh, we invested in Clovia in 2015. Uh, that was the time uh, also we invested in purple, bluestone, uh, and, and there was no D2C term at that time, right? So I think this term is so intuitive today. You know, and, and people question, you know, D2C is so intuitive, you know, why were we not using this term before? And I think the interesting transition which has happened over time is the fact that the ability that the technology has today to understand the consumer with the amount of data which is getting generated over time to know your consumer so well that you now, now know, even before the consumer themselves know what they really want. If you are able to actually tell them, you know, we know what you want. So that's what is the fundamental transition which has happened. I think at that time, 2015, 14, 15, when we started investing in this space, we saw that transition happening. We saw that the data is going to play a big role. The technology is going to play a big role in understanding the consumer. And of course, Clovia had that vision and they actually did an excellent job, exceptional job, in fact, in terms of understanding the mindset of the consumer, understanding what the consumer really wants, what the problems are. And I think uh, that's what is driving this whole sector now. So I know there are a lot of people who are wanting to probably catch you outside. You invested in Clovia and MyGlam and this, 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 please invest. What do you look at? One thing that you look at when you meet an entrepreneur? We just, uh, one thing is entrepreneur uh, himself or herself. You know, it's basically uh, What the, is an entrepreneur himself or herself? Dil jada dhadakta hai. You know, what is it? <laughs> I think the uh, fundamental thing is about does the entrepreneur have a vision to really make a fundamental disruption in the space they are in? And are they cut out for that? You know, do they have the passion to make that difference? I, I think this is beautiful have a vision to create a disruption, okay? And the beauty is that while somebody who's actually creating a disruption never thinks that he's creating a disruption. He or she is creating a great idea. The one who gets affected said that there's a disruption that's happened. So I think the vision is more important that your competitors realize that you, they have really disrupted the business. Yeah, but I like the disruption part of it uh, because I see Vikas who really saw a very huge problem and created something which is, I don't know whether disrupted the market or created a whole total new market. Because your journey. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, be Especially safe. identifying the problem to executing the product and taking the concept. It's sensitive, sensitive product, yeah? Taking the concept into the market. I think that journey will be interesting. So it was 2013 uh, when Srina, my wife, and I were traveling. And, uh, you know, everyone knows how difficult for the females and even for us to go to the public washroom. And it was a road trip and uh, she got ill, we went back to Delhi and she was diagnosed with UTI. Uh, while she was in the hospital, uh, we thought there should be something and it was way back in 2013, right? That uh, if we spray on a toilet seat, just like a hand sanitizer, uh, it can sanitize and minimize the risk of UTI because E. coli bacteria, which causes UTI actually sits on the toilet seat. Simple idea, nothing is just that I put a, a sanitizer in a form of a gas in a very easy carrying bottle and uh, started talking to people. But the name Be Safe, nobody want to utter it because way back, eight years back, and now it's so difficult to talk about toilet hygiene, menstrual hygiene, or so that. And it was so, so difficult back then. 
but we keep on going in and 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 uh, the product uh, as as we say that d2c and all uh, it was not there but the consumer came back to us if you're talking about toilet hygiene start talking about menstrual hygiene start talking about periods start talking about female condoms so anything which was intimate anything which was menstrual anything which was toilet we just kept on building it up uh, Execution, uh, because I had an experience of being an entrepreneur throughout my life, went to the uh, uh, manufacturers, talked to them, got the approval, compliances, and there, of course, it's a difficult journey. It's, a, it's a creating a category. Uh, toilet seat sanitizer was, was non-existence before 2013. So wow. I can proudly say that p is the first one in the world. I think, I think we should also clap for the husband who was concerned about his wife's health. <laughs> yeah, that also made a big difference. And we are talking of a country in India where 50% of the population pees on the road without even thinking. Okay, and, and we, you had a difficulty in actually conveying things to them. That, that's wonderful. Nitin, I want to come to you. When you're looking at brands, D2C brands, and you and Mensa and Goat, all of you have created an absolutely new market. What do you look at it here? What is D2C for you? Because I am sensing that a lot of D2C brands will come to people like us and say, but our mall is in our bechho." So then you will go against Neha and you know you'll still want to partner with a channel partner. So first of all, I don't think there is a concept of D2C, right? Um, what, we, what we like to think of it as a digital native or a digital first brand. A little closer. Um, so when you look at a digital first brand, I think there are characteristics as well. So even if you, when you look at a D2C brand, <clears throat> today uh, M Caffeine, P Safe, Clovia, everybody would sell through even Amazon and Mintra. So you're not technically a D2C, you're a digital first or a digital native, what that essentially means is you're looking at data much faster, you're launching products much faster, you are uh, making your products obsolete much faster. So the speed of the entire execution, irrespective of the channel that you're selling in, is extremely fast. So for example, in fashion cycle, you know, people typically would do two fashion cycles in the past, maybe four, right? In D2C, you would typically launch, what, 100 SKUs a month? Weekly cycles, right? That was unheard of. And that's digital native. So we need to distinguish more from a channel of sales saying what is the innate nature of a digital native brand, which is work with data, as Vikram said, and to be able to do things much faster and get customer feedback much faster. So when we look at a brand's ecosystem, our idea is to provide this knowledge faster and faster and enable all the channels, whether it's domestic online, whether it is website, whether it's an Insta, YouTube, or whether an offline channel, to be able to provide that ecosystem. The way we like to think is um, there is a fundamental duty of a retailer, saying when a customer walks in, I should have all the assortment at the price point for the category I'm known of. There's a fundamental duty of a brand to be present wherever my customer is present. And that takes a lot of effort and infrastructure. And that's how you know we would look at a brand and saying, what can we do for this brand? to be able to provide that access to its customers at a much faster and cheaper and more scalable manner. So would manner. it be fair to say that Amazon was the first digital to consumer uh, brand? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, uh, that's a platform, but that's a retailer. See, you need to distinguish a retailer and a brand. I, I think people need to make that distinct. When you say a D2C selling from my own website, then you are a retailer and the brand at the same time. But it has its own challenges. Um, you know, in terms of your funnel, every time the customer is coming, he has to come to your website only for your product and for 10 other products if he starts going to 10 other websites. Now, while customer likes it and whichever customer likes it, you service it and you should service it well, but as a brand duty, if he's going to any other platform to search your, uh, to search your product and if it's that not available, I think you've not fulfilled your duty as a brand. So I think you've used the word brand multiple times. This is very important. Tarun, I want to... I want to come to you before we go back to Nitin. Brand, how important is brand in a D2C environment? Think from your point of view, you've created a fantastic brand. Think from the others who are actually getting all the brands together on a platform like his or Mensa or any other platform. I think for us at Mcaffeine, brand is where the zero tolerance zone comes, right? So it's that important. No dilution. Keep it can, closer. No, no dilution can happen on the brand. It's, it's the For the audience, can you stretch the word zero tolerance? What does it mean? So if we have defined our brand in a certain way, uh, we will not move an inch for anything uh, which might say, yeah, 
So we, we apply coffee on your skin and hair. We were the first ones to say that, you know, coffee is great for your skin and hair. We wanted to create a brand in a certain specific way. And we said, we'll do it in this way. For example, brand is like a person. Brand has a personality and brand has a purpose. The moment I deviate away from my purpose of creating that brand, in a way, I'm diluting that brand. For example, we are a very high degro, degree etho brand, which essentially means we do use natural, vegan, PETA certified. We are one of the most clean label brands out there. But for example, there is some data point which comes to me and say, why don't you tweak some bit of that etho and create another top line? We won't do it oh. because it's great short term, bad long term. We don't do fairness cream. We have never done it. We will never do it. That's a part of the etho. That's the part of the purpose. And that's the personality which the brand will reflect over decades to come. So can you, can you give away the short-term pleasure for the long-term vision of the brand is where the zero tolerance comes into picture. And hence, brand, uh, we call it emotional currency. I'm trying to take a invisible space in your head. But if I've taken, it's invisible. So it would be very difficult for somebody to topple me out. That's where I think the most of our effort what goes. What does an entrepreneur like you require, or so many entrepreneurs sitting here, to have that steadfastness to say, boss, nahi karenge yaar. Ye hamare brand ke against mein hai. This is not what we want to do. This is not as per the brand purpose. Slight level of stupidity, right? I so, like it, I like it. Uh, 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 we were told in one of our uh, pitches that why don't, you, why don't you just start using the word brightening? We don't use brightening in our communication. And you know, this fancy angle. Women also never say I have brightened myself up. So it won't work also. But it works. I mean, the, the, the cream which sells the most uses this word uh, to the detail T and to the exposure of infinity. Uh, I, think, I think we... we okay, it binds back to the short-term pleasure. Hum chhod sakte kya? Haan chhod sakte. But ab chhod rahe ho, dhanda to banana padega na. I like I like one word from your uh, discussion. I want to share with the audience. I think he kept using the word purpose, and I think this is very very important. When you hear entrepreneurs, I think we have to be very clear. There's a difference between purpose, vision, and mission. A lot of people think that purpose is their vision. No. Purpose is much larger than life. Purpose is much larger than what you can think of. You may achieve your purpose in your lifetime. You may not achieve your purpose in your lifetime. Purpose is something which is all inclusive. Purpose is not necessarily for the product. So if you look at some of the words he used, brand invisible in the mind which cannot be captured by the competitor. Beautiful. Purpose. How many of you as entrepreneurs have a purpose statement of your company other than the vision statement? not a single hand, I would strongly recommend to go back and think. How many of you as individuals have a personal purpose in life written down for yourself? Yeah, there are four or five of them. Wonderful. But I would again urge all of you, please write down what for are you here? Why of the what is important for yourself? And that's very important. Most of the time when organizations and people don't get together well, it's because the purpose is not aligned. Organizational purpose is something else, and somebody else. I mean, he also used the word ethos. I mean, there are some key words that our panelists are using, which are very critical. Dhanda nahi hai, but sara dhanda isi se hota hai. And I'm sure when you talk to him, uh, Vikram will tell you that da, those are the things they look at in entrepreneurs when they really want to look at whom to invest in. But Nitin, I'm coming to you. Everybody uses digital technology. Technology, you are in the center. Talk about how the technology that you do or the overall technologies help this guy to reach the consumer. And what do you think going forward? Let's say six months, one year, two years, a little bit of crystal gaze on what technology can happen to help these guys do better, and so many of them here. Sure. Thanks, uh, thanks, Nagesh. Uh, I think, first of all, uh, you talked about uh, vision. So, uh, you know, at Adobe, we have a vision, and it's called uh, changing the world through digital experiences. And that's what we do. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, when, I, when I look at, uh, you know, you asked about uh, what's the definition of D2C and investments and, uh, you know, scaling and other things. Uh, I was hoping somebody would talk about the customer, you know, because how did you start? You started with the first customer buying your product. 
And that's, that's what uh, Ruby does uh, for organization. It all starts with the customer. And then you need to understand the customer, the customer needs. You need to find the gap in uh, you know, what they have uh, as a requirement in their life, and, and then you scale. So Adobe provides you the capability of understanding your customer, uh, bringing digital agility into your operations. It's not about, you know, I'm going to set up a website and I'm going to sell. Uh, you know, yeah, you will sell some, but how do you really scale? How do you really bring personalization that you talked about? Uh, you know? And uh, how do you safeguard data? A lot of uh, discussion around safeguarding customer data. Uh, making sure that uh, you know you embed analytics into your operation. It's just not about you know rewarding a transaction. If you think about that, I'm going to give you some points, and that's loyalty. It's not. It's about rewarding the entire journey of your consumer. You know, you 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 look at uh, what Nike did. It talked about you know fitness. It didn't say we would sell shoes, right? You look at Fitbit. It created a community of people who could share their fitness regime. So that, that's, the, that's the way I think about uh, you know, how brands can scale. Uh, obviously, purpose is important. Uh, you know, alignment, I, I, you know, M caffeine, uh, fantastic in terms of what you do. I kind of identify with the fact that it's not about going and sitting, a, you know, and becoming a me too. It's about creating your own identity. And that's what, uh, you know, today a large population in India sells. The other part is, um, you know, digital is real. So, if you look at it, last two years, um, you know, there's a transformation in relationship of customers and companies, of employees and employers, right? And there are new needs, new behaviors, and they're here to stay. So the faster we're able to go ahead and cater to those needs and cater to those behaviors, uh, the faster we can actually go ahead and sell. So that's what I would actually go ahead and really look at it, right? You understand what's the purpose, obviously, the vision of the brand, and then you understand your customer, and then you scale, and you make it very personal. You talked about, you know, Mufti and some of the other brands. You know, who was, what was the AI behind those brands? It was that sales guy in the store. He knew you, you walked in, he could actually give you all the things that you wanted, and that's transformed into now automation, right? It's transformed into AI, we heard about that from Shopperstop, how they use data like AI and other things. So, the, the, you know, the basics of brand, and the basics of engagement remain the same. It's just the scale and technology that's come in new. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the combination of the understanding of customer using data and AI and technology, but dil to dhalakna chahiye na. I mean, my, my question to you at a later stage will be, ki in a digital environment, hamara dil kaise dhalakega? Or hum customer ke saath mein dil mila ke aakho aakho mein kaise baat karenge? You know, that's, that's a, is, there a, is there a way that we'll be able to do that as we go forward? But let me come to you, Nitin. <clears throat> what is the size of this business opportunity? You all, you all pick so many businesses. And the reason I'm asking is, I don't have the exact figure, but I'm making a guess. In India, even 20-year-old brands, 30-year-old brands, whether it is fashion, lifestyle, anything, have reached a size and scale of about $200 million. 1500 crore, 1200 crore, 1500 crore, okay? Now, 1200, 1500 crore for a size of this country is piddly. You go to US and talk to anybody you talk to talks about a billion dollar. So, what is the big size? There are entrepreneurs who are sitting here. Can they think of creating a brand which can reach 500,000 crores in two years? Or you think it will all be 25, 30, 50, going to 100? Well, uh, if you look at the India ecosystem, the way we, we look at it, today, even today, um, your income tax population is like, what, 4% uh, sort of thing? 96% of India is entrepreneurs, technically. Uh, if you want to look at the consumption, even today, best of the stats will give you that 70 to 80% of the consumption market of India is unbranded, quote unquote. So now the size of the opportunity is actually 80% of the India retail consumption. Oh. Now that's, that's kind of infinite in that sense. You know, we, we can keep on doing this forever through generations and the market is infinite. So I think you just don't need to look at the branch market. I think you just need to look at the consumer market. And, and there are so many opportunities in those markets across the product categories. Today I can ask you, uh, you know, for an for a obscure segment, which, uh, you know, if you were to buy a simple thing like your, uh, say, a towel hanger in your bathroom, what brand would you buy? Right? I mean, is that a large enough market size? Yeah, it's probably a 500,000 crore market size. You just do some math and you'll figure that's oh. a 1,000 crore market size, right? Is there a brand in that? No, it's, it's unbranded. You go to the hardware store, a towel hanger, and that's about it. 
Is there a brand needed? Yes, I mean, who knew Hetech before you had the channel of this thing? But a brand got created in an unbranded segment, right? So if you look at the size of this market, it's literally 80% of India's retail consumption. And that's massive. Wow, wow. So now, now I think you just go home and start looking from everything in your wardrobe. Hangar branded, nahi hai, chalo, main bana sakta hon, branded, and pick up every particular item in your house and see the opportunity. So let, let, me, let me go back and talk to, <coughs> talk to Vikas. When you get into a category and you are an innovator, do you recommend people to keep expanding in the category? Or do you recommend people to go straight in and do deep dive and make volumes out of this? Because you have multiple products. Very good question. I've been asked this uh, time and again. Uh, when you create a new category as in India, when it's taboo to talk about menstruation or toilet hygiene, first definitely you have to go deep. But that won't bring you the top line. And I'm being very honest here. You have to keep on adding adjacent categories. So for example, we started with toilet hygiene and we, we got into the, uh, the houses or the purse. And then we went into uh, menstrual hygiene and we started talking about menstrual cups, right? That has become our, uh, you know, the first point of where a customer comes started coming in. Uh, so definitely, if to answer your question again, uh, and, and you are able to stress the same brand uh, into each of these uh, products. Absolutely, because P Safe, uh, you know, though it's a synonym, it's a generic name for toilet sheet sanitizer, but we have created that trust and the purpose which he think about it. So the purpose is about sustainability. The purpose is about we are reducing the risk of many diseases and uh, why you want to create a different brand when you are already in, in, in the mind of your consumer. Uh, and of course, brand means trust. So definitely, it really helped us. Many, many said that you, you won't succeed in uh, creating a menstrual hygiene product under PSAFE, but we did. Uh, but just to answer your question, uh, to create a category, we have to go a deep initially, but we have to come out with adjacent categories. That, that's yeah. an interesting question on the brand perk. Uh, because a lot of, lot of entrepreneurs want to say, oh, I will create A brand, I've been successful, let me create another B brand, another C brand, so in a company I'll have four brands of 25 crores each, and I'll be a 100 crore company. Is this the way to look at it, Vikram? Would you look at a company which has got one brand, 50 crores, opportunity to 500 crore, or a company which has got four brands, 100 crore, opportunity to 8,000 crores? It's not easy at all, because I think, uh, you know, a brand has an association with a with a need with a segment with a uh, with the problem that it is solving uh, with the target audience and if you are extending that to other products and other segments and i think uh, you really have to have that your core purpose has to be extended across all your uh, product categories that you are actually extending the brand to so i think it's it's not an easy thing people have done that people have done that very successfully but i think you know, it's about, you know, what kind of vision you have, what kind of time frame you're looking at, you, what kind of investment you're making into building that. Uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, Global Bees is, a, is an interesting example of the aggregating brands through a single platform. Uh, you know, Purple is a platform which actually aggregates or brings brands uh, on the platform, you know. Uh, but there is a common kind of a theme across all these brands in terms of the messaging and the way the... Uh, where Purple actually addresses the customers or how they reach out to the customers. Uh, so there's a common values there across the entire brands uh, that they actually sell through their platform. So I think it's, it's not easy, but I think what uh, Vikas is talking about, I think it's actually a, a great example of, you know, when you're building a new category, I think you have an opportunity to actually, you know, create a single brand which can actually be then taken across multiple products that you can actually then you know, take across different segments. So I think it's a, it's a good example. So actually. I just want you to play a little KBC. If top line, growth, and profitability are the three words, and we ask you to rank it one, two, three, how would you rank? Now, it, it really depends on, you know, if I look at it as an investor, you know, I actually look at uh, a time frame, I have to take an exit, you know, so Let's I was- five years. Yeah, five years, uh, you know, people are looking at top line, more than the bottom line right now because you know the market is so large as Nitin said earlier the the size of the market is huge uh, so even if you're not profitable let's say in a five-year time frame you know that you can be profitable and you can be substantially profitable so therefore you know as long as you're able to address the breadth of the market as as long as the unit economics are okay your gross margins are fine means 
you know, even if you invest in marketing uh, and brand building uh, over this time frame, then profits will happen as long as your fundamentals are strong. So top line and growth is important. So, uh, I just want to add something which yep, I'm missing, yep. sorry. Uh, when you were creating a category, so what we did is our focus and our purpose was from puberty to menopause. So when you are targeting puberty to menopause, uh, a, a lady stays there with you for good yeah. 38 to 40 years. That is how we have been. I think that's a beautiful that's way That's how of, we have been adding a products. Beautiful way of aligning to a consumer. If you can actually look at and align your journey with the consumer, uh, why not, you know, but sometimes it creates a problem. You say, I want to be from, uh, from uh, cradle to grave, and you get into problem, yeah? But let me switch the way we're talking about it. Neha, with you. You created a journey, husband, wife, I think some other family member has come. You've taken it to size and scale. Maybe people like him have exited. You've also got acquired with a majority. Tell me in this journey, two or three challenges, especially on the people's side. I think uh, taking the cue from just previous question, one thing uh, very early on in our entrepreneurial journey, we realized that brand, brand's vision, brand's purpose are long-term gains. So the brand will not feed the business at first, the business will feed the brand. And therefore, uh, you know, from people's perspective also, I think uh, those are the decisions you make. So initially, uh, you know, one, uh, an entrepreneur should not fall so much in love with their idea of a brand uh, that they stop to listen to uh, customers, most important. This is so, contradiction, you know. Jab passion hai, or pagalpan hai, or stupidity hai, to ye love kyun nahi hoga? Haan, to matlab, uh, mukammal pyaar bhoat uh, dangerous cheez hai. So you have to be very careful with, uh, you, you've got to listen to what the world is saying. And an entrepreneur, the biggest thing is you should know when to stop as well. You should know more about what not to do than what to do in my opinion. And I All think of them <laughs> have come to learn from your mistakes and failures so that they don't repeat. So, so I think one thing right we did was for first two years, because we had Vikram and he was telling us I've got to exit in so much time, we made sure that sales came first. We told you the exit plan before the entry. Yeah? Yeah, that's... <laughs> Vikram, secrets are coming out huh, of investors. But he did not. Yeah. But he did not. That was a... I think um, he was just sort of uh, pulling us up. And I'm sure that everybody does. And that's what uh, kept us in tow also. Um, that kept us towing the line as well. But I think... Uh, so we did a lot of uh, short-term sales, unlike what uh, Tarun said. So each of us have different journeys. I did the silliest things, going on TV, selling shapewear, look, I was this fat, now I wear this, I look uh, slimmer, etc. But, um, so we did, so we hired sales before marketing. We hired technology uh, before a lot of, uh, you know, brand gurus or, uh, uh, you know, even designers. Um, a lot of things we solved by technology so that we could reach our sales targets faster. And today, I think uh, that decision held us um, uh, in good stead because now brand is able to feed the business. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, any tips how to manage investors? <laughs> you can say that he's a good investor, but other than that, well, how yes. to manage? <laughs> yeah, he is the best of the lot. Um, I think uh, there's only one way to do it. You keep, you've got to keep showing growth and uh, sales. I don't think there's any other way to do it. Is there any other way, Vikram? You would know. Uh, I, first of all, I uh, appreciate your comments. But I think uh, uh, we can have a mutual fan club here. But I think the, the idea is that, you know, if, if the question is for the audience, you know, how to manage your investors. And I think very clearly the fundamental thing is communication. I think which is the key to, I mean, as long, even if you're making mistakes, you know, as long as you communicate it well to your investors, uh, investors are always there to help you to solve your problems. And as long as we are aware what you're going through, only then we can help you, right? So that's the whole idea. So I think somebody told me use the three T's. As long as you're truthful, as long as you're, you're transparent, trust will get developed. And trust doesn't build by cutting a check. Trust builds as you start interacting and moving forward. Then I want to come to you. Uh, audience, I'm going to come for a Q&A. So if you have a questions, be ready. Uh, Anisha has given me five, seven minutes for Q&A. Tarun, are you alone as a founder? Do you have a co-founder? Do you have senior people, a CEO or somebody like that? Talk about the top management and how do you bring the management together to drive a business like this? 
So we are five co-founders, uh, and we don't have a uh, executive position. All I, all ex connections, classmates from IIT, Delhi kinds. Four, yes, from the same college. Uh, one from the other college, but knew him from a very long time. Uh, exceptional. Uh, level of leadership of what they have done in the last five years at M Caffeine. We don't have a working CEO. I take that responsibility at M Caffeine. Uh, now we have about five member leadership team outside us, uh, people from the industry where we need subject matter expertise. For a very long time, we have built it in a way which is zero to one, bring in people who are exceptionally passionate about building something, but at some point of time, hand over the reins to someone who has done from one to 10. So we have retail, supply chain, okay. finance, okay. But I think at the core of it, and uh, to kind of intersect with, the, with your last question, for the last five years, we have been constantly trying to answer whether we are building a family or a sports team. And after a lot of deliberation, we have come to a conclusion that we are trying to build a sports team. So we will get people who are exceptional openers. We will get people who are exceptional ball ballers. Uh, some might be a youngster. Some might be an experienced guy. But we'll build the A-class sports team to build in our space. And outside that, I think we have a very strong culture code to, the, to how we are building it. It might be a bit naive, but uh, I think it is working well for us. There are five H. So tell me when you build the culture. I'm sure you must be having conflicts between the five founders. How yeah. do you resolve conflicts? I think we fight a lot. We have very, very different viewpoints. But over time, all those arguments slash disconnects have boiled down to one document on which we all five of us swear by. That document tells us five things as, as the supreme code of anyone joining M Caffeine. One should be extremely hungry and hence should be the best hustler in town. He or she should be the most honest person on the table because you can, you can actually blow up any project at any point of time because we are all constrained. But outside these three things, you need to be really humble and we keep on t telling ourselves that we should be the most humble guys. Uh, but arrogance and complacency should be out of the table. And after that, you should enjoy. So you should be the most humorous guy as well. And we wow, this uh, is the, the five H. Five H. Yeah, very nice. I like all of them, but hustler is the first time I've heard. How do you how do you become a hustler in within the team? Give them a problem statement in which uh, you don't know the solution. And and our problems we have like that. Truck ho gaya, driver ho gaya, mal nahi aara. Marketing me ad chala diya, lekin data hi flow nahi kar raha. Decision ke. Mujhe bhi nahi pata. Karlo, kuch to figure out kari loge. This is very, very interesting. The sentence he used, Mujhe bhi nahi pata. I think that is the biggest clincher of any business. I don't know. Because most entrepreneurs start with saying, I don't know. And therefore, they go to customers and try to get answers from customers. And when you get answers from customers, you are an inclusive organization. And when <coughs> Tarun was talking about customer, we all talk about how customers are loyal to us. For one moment, I want you all to think as a business, how loyal are you to your customers? Because the customer makes more effort before he comes to your brand, whether digital or whether offline or online. The question is, are you making similar effort to become loyal to customers? Yeah? And that is very, very, very critical. I think there's so much of learning. I wish, I wish images could record and take out small, small snippets, beautiful words that have come out of wisdom and which can actually help you create uh, great brands. We have probably five minutes, so I'll take two questions. One from this side, one from this side. Anybody has? Yes, please. Request you to keep it as a question. No statement, no comment. Yeah, question for Mr. Vikram. Uh, I would like to understand that when you guys choose to invest in brands, especially D2C brands, what is the end motive that you guys are looking at? Where do you want to take this brand to? Is it to just make it public, which is, I think, what most investors see it as? Or is it to handhold it to a certain scale and then go and sell your stake to another investor or someone like that? Yeah, so I think uh, maybe I can, I can give you some examples, uh, you know, uh, and I'll try to keep it short. Uh, you know, Bluestone, when we invested in Bluestone, you know, it was a brand being created in the jewelry space. Uh, and at that time, it was just online brand. So it was fundamentally a different concept, you know, Jewelry by nature is a product you would like to touch and feel before you actually buy the product. 
and and fundamentally this entrepreneur just was kind of trying to do it in a very different way he's trying to disrupt the market that you know, he's actually out there to prove that i can do it online only and and for first 3 4 years he actually did it online only he introduced a concept of try at home you know let me send people to home just touch and feel the product if that's the problem didn't work finally last 2 years he's now launched about 60 stores all of a sudden there is a point of inflection where suddenly we are seeing the sales have gone substantially higher so the thing is that you know we look for first of all you know how the entrepreneur is thinking about the brand itself what category we are looking at what is the space large enough you know uh, are you disrupting something and, and i think the, the entire journey is very interesting right so you know this brand as when we invest was very small and today is going for an ipo so i think it's a it's very interesting how you actually look at the entire vision and where all we can also add value and, and you know fundamentally and we saw that opportunity for for us to actually influence the value creation uh, in that area so that's those are some of the areas that wow. we look at oh yeah when you were talking of blue stone i remember two years back there was an article as to how carrot lane sold a 1 crore uh, worth of jewelry online and i was amazed i mean for somebody to trust to do 1 crore but eventually i was told the transaction on on money didn't happen like that here to go and he paid out from cash on delivery kind of a situation but amazing anybody has a question on this side oh yeah can you get the i'll come to you and that will be the last question yeah question no comments please yeah sure uh, so my question is uh, see being entrepreneurs we are very motivated to try new things and maybe do multiple businesses at the same time i want to know the investors perspective on this that if a founder or an entrepreneur is doing multiple businesses in one go and maybe pulling it off very well what investors think about those entrepreneurs and because i feel on like investors want to like want the entrepreneurs to be focused so what's the investors perspective on that maybe i can so we are, so i am personally <clears throat> extremely biased when it comes to focus i actually believe that you have to be extremely focused in fact you know we actually spend extra time during our due diligence to understand what else are you trying to do do you have stakes in other companies in fact we don't invest in entrepreneurs who actually are also angel investors you know actually there are lots of these entrepreneurs who started doing their angel investments on the side so we don't uh, invest especially if they have beyond a certain stake in these companies so we we want the, our entrepreneurs to be extremely focused on the purpose and the vision that they are basically Wonderful. working on this also a slight remark to neha abhi paisa aa gaya hai to angel investor karogi to fir baki investments nahi aayega you know this is for all those people who have made a little exit yeah last question here please i'm sonia and uh, my question i think maybe to tarun or maybe even neha uh, that you know as d2c brands uh, when you're engaging with the customer especially when everybody's trying to tap performance marketing how important is it to for brands you know of course awareness and conversions are the key uh, part of the sales funnel but how important is it for a d2c brand to also look at deeper ways of engagement which is more long term which is not just top of the mind but also deeper recall for the brand and creating that kind of an intimacy with the customer and what are some ways that you're doing it so i think for brands that are upcoming now uh, practically marketing costs have gone up really high customer acquisition cost is uh, through the roof so what you should prepare yourself from day one is to work on uh, first party data to have that data in your hand which really uh, comes through for repeats uh, second is of course you need to when you are delivering your order at that point it creates a big opportunity for you to uh, have an experience or an engagement with customer so be mindful of these two points because uh, going through facebook google and a, a host of other performance marketing is, is is the most expensive marketing that you would do thank you neha and before we close yes go ahead please you had a comment sir thanks thanks sir nagesh and uh, i think we had a question from the gentleman ashwinder about technology and being in technology i thought let me give uh, the good part of how you could use technology so i think if you look at it right um, your d2c brand and we talked about brand versus channels versus this and that i i'd just give a few pointers can be used by everybody and we are we're here to help one we talked about digital so digital agility and you had examples here right uh, on operations and customer experience so you've got to have that agility in both areas it's not about putting your first store it's about also having operations which are digital 
The second aspect uh, you know, heard was around data and analytics. It's very important because you need to understand what's going on, right? And yeah, I, I agree. Sometimes you say, I don't know, but you know, that can be addressed by getting all the insights. Uh, the third part is uh, very important, and yeah, you talked about it, right? First party data, safeguard your data. It's, it's, it's the differentiation that you create for your business, whether you're single brands, multi-brand, omni-channel, single channel, whatever it is. And the last part, which I must say, is remain close to your customers. A lot of times I see organizations kind of moved on to data so much, they forgot about the customer completely. And that's what's, uh, you know, that leads to that, you know, downward trend. So those are certain things I thought, Nagesh, uh, I'd like to share. Thank Thanks. you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, what a wonderful panel we had. So much we learned, and I'm sure you all enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you everybody for the, for the wonderful discussion. Thank you.